Welcome back to another tutorial. This time we're going to cover the group scan, as you might be able to see here. So what the group scan is useful for is finding values in a structure at the same time. So for instance, over here we have hearts and bombs and uh, ropes, and we have score or gold. And they're probably all in the same structure because they're all related to the character. They might not be, but they probably are, or at least some of them are. And so what you might do is normally, without group scan, what you would do is you'd find one, come in here and scan for four, and then you change your bombs, you do a new scan, and hopefully it doesn't take very long. And you come in here and you see, okay, this is accessing it, and or you might come into the memory viewer and just look in the browse section and see if you can find some other values that look like they're useful. Display type four. Right, so there's another four that's probably ropes. Let's see, there's some fours that might be health or max health. Um, let's see, is there anything else? Well, let's pick up some gold here. So there's 2,000, and let's see, there's 2,000 right there. So that would be what you would normally do if you knew these were already close to each other and maybe it's harder to scan for these values. You don't have just have to do two scans. You might want to do a group scan and say, I know they're all together. Let's see, whoops, that's three. So let me just tell you that and you figure it out, how to scan for all of them at the same time. So, bombs, ropes, hearts, and then 2,000, yes. Score. And then, I don't know what order these are in because I don't remember from when I just looked. So I can go, hey, it's out of order, and I want to add some extra spacing here because there might be a couple other values in between. And let's see, let's say 64. And of course, the more larger the area you're searching, the longer it's gonna take. Um, if you already know the order, then you can leave this out and you put the order in here and you use uh, skip number of bytes here. If you need to, if you know there's stuff in between. Uh, oh, and you can also say add you can change it so that if one of these is, for instance, the team value, it says that this is a player and this is an enemy. So maybe it's one for the player. You put that in here, but if it's not something you're gonna change, you can uncheck add. And that way it won't add it to the address list when you find it up here. All right, so that's what that's good for. But then you do your scan. And in this case, it's unique enough that we only find two results and they're actually right next to each other. So it really doesn't matter which one you pick. So we can come in here and that's the same thing we just found originally. And we can set all of these to 99 and we can change our goal to 20,000 or so. Right. Now, in this game, the health is actually not stored with your bombs and your score. Um, this is actually a display value. And there's two scores. There's one score for how much you've picked up in the current level, and there's one score for your total. Uh, let's see, I'm not sure if it's plus four or... Okay, yeah, that looks right. So if I change that to 5,000, really? Maybe it updates when I pick up gold. I'm not sure now. All right. Find some gold. I'm terrible at this game. I enjoy playing it, but I'm absolutely terrible at it. Interesting. Well, this did go up to 5,500. Just this point, that value didn't change. Okay. I haven't spent too much time testing this. But I wanted to demonstrate that you can use this block size and out of order, because that's actually fairly useful to find values. Um, let's see. Um, one other thing, once you find these, if you do open it up in a dice sec data, let's just throw zeros in there. That way we get to see stuff in front. Let's see, is there a 2000 in here by the way? 
Close score. No. Huh. Wonder where that started. I haven't cheated on this game. Um, I don't see the point. Uh, let's see. All right. What I wanted to say is you can come in here and you can actually generate you, the group scan. It'll automatically fill it out based on what you have selected. And if you do multiple, then again, it'll put in the skip bytes for you. And you can, I don't know why it doesn't uncheck those by default. Weird. But, and let's see, leave value empty or star for wildcard, right? So if you do that, it should, did it replace this? Yeah, it, ha it replaced that. What is wildcard? If I leave these empty, what does it use for wild card in the string? Normally I'd put a star in there, but okay, well, since they all were empty. Oh, I bet it just um, uses more skip bytes. Let's see. Yeah. See, now there's 12 that are skipped. And if I remember correctly, um, W is actually the value for string, ain't it? S for string. Okay. Um, w must just work the same way as string and get the code, which I looked at a while back. Let's see. I think that's everything I wanted to cover. Um, you have your different types. You input a value or leave it empty or star, asterisk, uh, for wildcard. Um, you can write your own just by typing it in. You can do float and double and all that. You can also do custom values. And it'll put C and then the type name. Um, yeah, I think that's it. It's pretty simple, but being able to use that out of order and just picking a block size is fairly useful in certain circumstances. 